All right, guys, how we doing? Good. Uh, you know, I was just thinking, uh, you know, probably the biggest reason I didn't get back in this earlier was because, uh, you know, losing so hard. You know, losing, losing is the worst thing. You know, it's awful. But, uh, you know, it, it kind of it ties into that thing where I said uh, earlier, you know, in the spring, in the summer, really even when we were four and three, that, you know, it's really too early to start putting everything on wins and losses. And I think it's important that we, that I uh, continue to think that way. You know, I'm not someone that says, well, if you take six plays out of this Wyoming game, we really played good defense. Or, well, if you look at it and, you know, against Boise, against Air Force, against Wyoming, we had the ball in the last possession of the game with a chance to win. Look how far we've come. I hate that. You know, I hate spinning things and trying to find positives. But I think, honestly, that's important for us right now as we start to build this. You know, even though I don't like that mindset, that's reality. That is reality. And, I, and it's no different than when I stood here and said, it's too early to worry about the wins. You know, you really have to look at the positives because there are so many positives there. Uh, and I just, I really love the attitude of these coaches and I love the attitude of these players. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's neat to see. It really is, you know. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of focus on just being as good as we can be. I think there's been a pretty even-keeled approach to everything. Um, you know, so not to get too philosophical, but I think it's really important, particularly with me, because, uh, you know, the, the losses are so hard to take. You know, you get that feeling of, all of this and all these kids have done and all these seniors have been through and man, they don't have much to throw, show for it, you know, because we've lost four games in a row. But then, you know, when I get around these players, I see that they do have a lot to show for it and they're very appreciative and their attitude is unbelievable. Um, you know, not that we're perfect, but there's a lot of positives in there. And, uh, you know, moving forward, I think that's really, really important. You know, not in a way to try to spin things or try to, create a safety net and say, well, look at this, we're doing this, but even though we lost four straight games. But there's some good things going on. And, um, you know, I look at Nevada. Uh, you know, Nevada is really what we want to try to become. Uh, they, they, they've had tremendous continuity. Um, they have a tremendous identity. Uh, when you say Nevada, right away you say Chris Alton, pistol offense. And then the next thing I see now looking at them that I've gotten to know them a little bit better is very physical, very physical team, good looking players. Uh, I can see they develop players. I can see they're well coached. So again, I, I think Nevada is, um, you know, kind of a template for us moving forward. And it's, it's a big challenge because um, they're ahead of us. They're better than us right now. I mean, there's no denying that. Uh, but we've got some positives. Uh, you know, just like in some places, they have some negatives. So again, you know, I expect us to go out there and be very competitive and hopefully have a chance to win this game. But, you know, big picture wise, uh, you know, it's become really clear to me what we need to do, where we need to go, how we need to get there. You know, but it's too early. It's still squeezing every ounce of juice out of these seniors and out of this team. Uh, you know, um, I'm just anxious to see what we can, how good we can play these last two games. It's that simple. So with that, any questions, I'll be glad to take them, guys. So what, is, what is clear? You said it's clear. clear, some things are going to take time. Uh, you know, we didn't get in this situation overnight. Uh, it's probably been four years coming, probably Rockies last year and then the last three to get in this position. You're not going to get out of it overnight. There's no miracles. You know, we are what we are. Uh, truthfully, we're probably maximizing what we are right now. Uh, so uh, rather than look at, God, we should have won, I'm looking at it, these kids are doing a heck of a job getting to where we can even sit here and say, man, we should have won. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. Um, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to go through the whole roster thing. You guys have been around here. Uh, you know, it's not going to happen next year. We may take a step back before we take a step forward, as much as we all want to step forward. There's a reality in this whole thing. You know, there's a reality. And that's what I think I probably have a clearer grasp on than most. Uh, you know, and I've, I've tried to be even keel and really evaluate this. And, um, you know, I realize we've got to roll up our sleeves and keep them rolled up. And it's going to be, 
It's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. Sponsor, in media day in July, Chris Hall was, was drew a distinction between the pistol formation, which a lot of teams use, you use it, you've seen it, and the pistol offense that they run. Uh, what are the differences that you see? Yeah, Rick, you know, we, we talked on the conference call. I, I think you're exactly right. You know, with everything, there become hybrids of what it originally was because everybody steals each other's concepts. And then you take a bunch of intelligent people and they, they try to tweak it and change it and make it better. And it's happened with every offense. You know, Chris Alt's original uh, pistol, it's really a, a combination of the quarterback being in the shotgun but having a physical approach with eye formation, north-south plays. Because everybody until that time was in the shotgun, but the back was offset next to him sideways. So the back could only go sideways, which is not the most physical offense. Well, he said, you know what, I'm going to be in the shotgun. I'm going to have the passing game, the passing formations. But I'm going to put that guy right behind the quarterback so I can run eye formation plays. It's just there's no fullback in there. And then he started bringing the tight end who's off the ball as the cruiser around creating different things with that tight end coming back in there as an extra blocker. So where we've headed with it is we're doing the same things. You know, Casey Carrier is really a good eye tailback, really. He gains a lot of plays that look like option. They're just eye formation plays. But they have some window dressing where it looks like option. But it's just eye. You're handling the tailback. We have Lucas Reed as the cruiser. We are a hybrid because we're in the pistol, but we're running triple option. They'll run a lot of double – I mean, that quarterback will come out of there with the ball off the read zone, but there's no pitch back. So we've taken for our situation, and we're in the pistol, but it's triple option. So it's not Air Force. It's not Nevada. It's somewhere in between those two. And you got to give Chris Alt. I mean, uh, that's a remarkable guy. He's, he's been in the run and shoot as a coach. He's been in the true wishbone as a coach. He's been in wing T. And then he comes up and puts it up and comes up with the pistol. You know, I've got tremendous respect for him. Tremendous respect. Um, and, um, you know, he's still down there calling those plays, too. You know, it, it's it's kind of neat. You know, he's, he's done a lot of things in football, and he's been a pioneer. So I don't know if that... Yeah, you know, they, they've, um, first of all, their offensive line's really good. Uh, they've got a fast tailback. You know, he's fast. Uh, but the quarterback is equally as fast, and he can throw it. So they've got so much more balance than we have right now. What they've done is their passing game is where our triple option game is. You know, they, they devote their time. Um, obviously, they're recruiting their style of quarterback. They're more pistol and pass. We're more pistol and run triple option just because of where we are. Um, so, you know, as we evolve in this thing and depending on, uh, you know, Cole's development or who else we bring in as quarterbacks and how this thing goes, if we can get better on defense, then pass may become more of an option for us just like it is for them. But, yeah, I mean, they've got a, they're a tremendously balanced team. They are truly a balanced team because they throw it and they run it. And they're explosive at the key positions. Is the type of quarterback that you would like to have? Running I think everybody would. I think everybody would because he's really fast and he can really throw it. Uh, I think Wyoming's quarterback, uh, is it Brad Smith? Yeah. Brent Smith is, is, is that kind of guy. You know, and Cole can become that kind of guy. I mean, Cole is bigger. I mean, Cole's 230 pounds now. And he'll, he'll wear you down. Um, when he throw, you know, he's got his – assets just as well you know so and, and again as you guys know in the end it comes down to those intangibles at that position you know so the really great ones what you're good at you're good at it's the ability to get better at the things that aren't your strength so Cole's off season Cole's spring Cole's next three years I'm banking and I'm betting he has those intangibles to get better at the things that right now maybe are his weaknesses so, yeah, I mean, if you just said 40-yard dash and arm strength, yeah, the kid is Nevada, the kid at Wyoming, you know, but, but Cole's, in that, Cole's in that group, too, in his own way. Man, you do have to bring that up. 
you know we don't talk about that around here now. <laughs> no, we we uh, we kind of are what we are. You know, um, uh, you, you know, you go back and a lot of time spent on some guys that aren't even on that field. A lot of time. Uh, a couple guys, their own mistakes were time invested. Nobody got anything back. So that's another great uh, point of moving forward. Productivity out of guys that coaches have invested a tremendous amount of time in. Then there's two other guys that were injured, both in the Texas State game. That Texas State game was a long time ago when Desan Mills and Jamal Merritt went down. So we've played a lot of football, uh, you know, and don't think that other coaches don't recognize it pretty quickly. They, they understand what it is. It, it doesn't take long to realize uh, you know, what we are and where we are. So, yeah, I mean, there's no question. Uh, you read Dave Christensen's comments. He said, you know, we, we came out and we tried to be balanced and run it. Uh, we probably didn't expose them quite as early as we should have, knowing where our liabilities are. You know, that's what it is. How many JC quarterbacks are you planning on bringing I don't know, you know. Um, I don't know. It, it depends on the guy. I mean, we want a guy that uh, – uh, you know, we can coach really hard. A guy that we ask a guy to be physically tough. Uh, all those things. You know, I, I don't think there's an exact number on it. How, how is the recruiting going? Uh, we'll find out. You know, I mean, I think back to a year ago, frightening. Walking in, I'm walking in here probably about this time, right? Maybe a couple weeks later. And I mean, there's not a name anywhere. There's no... There's no show me your list of guys you're recruiting. I mean, it's which is human nature. I mean, I know if the head coach was gone in September, uh, if I'm an assistant coach, I don't know that I'm up there making a lot of phone calls and recruiting, right? So it's 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 just another byproduct of why it's going to take time. Uh, you know, so a year ago, I mean, there's not a name on the board now. <laughs> you know, you're you're saying, okay, coach, let's go recruit. Well, where are we going? You know, so. So again, we, are, we have a year in the system of, of, of identifying guys, evaluating guys. But this situation is a little different too because um, you know, maybe some other places I've been, you pinpoint those 40 guys. And you say, you know what, we may not get them, but we're gonna be in the ballpark at the end. We're, we're gonna get a visit. We're gonna come down to one, two, or three schools are considering. Here, there is a little bit of the dust settling to see who offers guys. You know, does the BCS, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech come in out of nowhere? You know, we had it last year with Saquon Edwards. The night before the signing date, Oklahoma State comes in out of nowhere, swoops in on the guy, and all of a sudden he's back on his heels. Well, the same thing here. You know, so there's a little bit of here's our list, but this list can get picked apart pretty quick depending on where some other schools head with their offers. So here's our second list. So you have to be really, really organized and really efficient. And I think we, you know, I think we are. We've devoted a lot of time to it. But I'm also realistic enough to know those, those guys that are your A targets can all of a sudden be somebody else's A target and you have no shot to get them. I think we've got to be realistic and be, you know, same thing in that. You know, to go spend your time. Uh, thinking you're going to recruit a guy and sign a guy and you have no chance is no different than that DB you bring in and you invest all that time in him and at the end of the day he's not there. It's just wasting time. And you got to be smart, particularly here, of all those things. You know, it's, it's a little different animal. What would you like the fans to know about your seniors, this group of seniors? Uh, you know, these guys, I'm telling you, everybody coach says it, but these aren't my guys. But I hate to see these guys leave. I honestly hate to see these seniors leave. I would love, I would love to have another year with these guys or another two years with these guys. And that's probably the biggest compliment I can give them. Because you think of all the different ways they could have gone uh, with the season. Uh, we lost to Texas and Texas Tech early, back to back on the road, got slapped. We came back and beat New Mexico State. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of things these guys have been through. I wish they had more time. And I feel like they deserve more time, to be honest. I feel like they've been cheated. I can honestly say that. And uh, these guys are my guys now. And that's, 
You know, I, I don't in any way look forward to this season being over and look forward to, well, let's go get another group of guys. I take these guys for as long as they want to be here. I mean that. And that's the biggest single compliment I could say about them. There, there's some great kids in here. Is there any better? Is there any better as we start this thing off representative of what your New Mexico man should be than Matt Raymer? 50-year senior, came here without a scholarship. I don't know if he played five plays last year on defense, maybe. Well, how many plays did Matt Raymer play last year on defense? Maybe two, three plays on defense. He's played every snap, every snap since the Texas State game. Uh, you know, I think over at the University of Texas and Matt Raymer comes on a strong safety blitz over. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, he's a guy that self-admitted will be our, be our slowest defensive back. But he's our most productive guy. Is there not a better representative when you say New Mexico man? We might as well just ingrain his name, engrave his name somewhere as the New Mexico man. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, we can win games with Matt Raymers now. Um, you know, the goal is not to have Matt Raymer play 75 plays a game, but we can win games with Matt Raymers. I think so. You know, I think so because, um, you know, that was my biggest fear. My, my biggest fear was I, I put all of our team goals around the seniors because I think there's always that – inherited type deal when a new coach comes in well the seniors are kicked out particularly seniors that hadn't had much success you know why you know why, why be playing Reggie Ellis right now when you have uh, Darian Allen and Jerron Bourne and Twitty that but I wasn't going to do that you know so I made a commitment to these guys and I think they in turn made a commitment to me and to see those guys play their best game the Reggie Ellis is Rod Davis is Saturday after getting beat at UNLV meant a lot you know, yesterday wasn't like the Monday after UNLV. Yesterday, we could honestly put that tape up there and show a lot of positives out of the Wyoming game. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know because of my first year back. I just know because of the situation, uh, the, the, these seniors are, are – uh, it's good to see them finishing with some juice and some energy and some pride and some fire and fight. And I, and I don't have any question they will. I wish BR was out there. That's what really hurts. You know, I mean, I mean, B.R. Holbrook now, I'd love to have him out there playing. Love to have him for him. I mean, he's out there now. He tried to throw last night. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's some special guys, man. Through all that adversity, you know, in the big picture of this, these guys walk out of here having gained from the college football experience. You know, they've gained from it. And that's, that's, uh, that's encouraging. Okay, guys? All right, guys, thanks.